Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And so I did get a comment on the last video that I did about the Tensor G5, and it's, you know, being compared to the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And so here's a comment right here. And luckily enough, uh, the same people who did the comparison or brought up the comparison decided to bring up the comparison between the Snapdragon 8 Elite and the Tensor G5. So we're going to take a look and see what we see. But remember, uh, we don't know the full tale of the Tensor G5 until these phones are in hand. And so I intend to run my own benchmarks once I get my Pixel 10. However, it's probably going to be maybe like a week or two after I have it all set up and I've been running it as normal. And then I will run a benchmark on these different ones. So Geekbench and T2, all that stuff. But anyways, let's take a look and see what they talk about in this article. I'll put the link in the description, by the way. So anyways, uh, we'll take a look first at the Tensor G5 versus the 8 Elite with the Geekbench scores. Um, so here we have the Tensor G5 uh, single core, 2,276. Apparently, these are rumored to be the scores, so they're not definitive. But for, you know, for content's sake, let's just say. Uh, 2276 for the Tensor G5 and 3033 for the 8 Elite. So that's a single core. Multi core, 6173 for the Tensor G5 and 9271 for the, for the 8 Elite. So that's a pretty large gap right there. Keep in mind, uh, I believe both of these chipsets are manufactured by TSMC. So it's not going to be this thing where it's like, oh, it's because the G5 is built by Samsung. It's not built by Samsung this time. So, um, yeah. Anyways, so we go down here to and two two scores. Uh, we got for the G five. Uh, its overall score we got one million one hundred forty thousand two hundred eighty six to the eight elite, which is two million seven hundred fifty nine thousand one hundred ninety. For the CPU, it's uh, three hundred thirteen thousand five hundred for the G five, five hundred eighty three thousand seven hundred seventy five for the 8 Elite. And then the GPU, so 394,695 for the G5, and 1,132,574 for the 8 Elite. In memory, it's 246,571 as its score for the G5, and for the 8 Elite, it's 643,562 for the 8 Elite. And then you got 185,520 uh, for the G5 on the UX, and then uh, for the 8 Elites, UX is 399,279. So that's the N22 scores, apparently. All right, now when you look at the, the specifications between the Tensor G5 and the Snapdragon 8 Elite, so they're both 3 nanometer built processors from TSMC. Um, the G5's uh, CPU is a 8-core ARM Cortex CPU, while the 8 Elite is a 8-core second-gen Orion CPU. Uh, for the G5, it's got one Cortex X4, five Cortex A725s, two Cortex A520s. Where if you look on the 8 Elite, it's two second gen Orions, six second gen Orions. So the difference of that is, is that with the 8 Elite, the, the two uh, second gen Orions are clocked at 4.32 gigahertz, and then the other six are clocked at 3.53 gigahertz. Whereas on the G5, um, the X4 is clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, and then five of the A725s are clocked at 3.05 gigahertz, and then two of the A520s are clocked at 2.25 gigahertz. So uh, for the GPU, the G5's Imagination Technologies DXT48 1536 GPU with no ray tracing, and on the 8 Elite, it is the Adreno 830 GPU. Uh, storage, UFS 4.0 on both of them, LPDDR5X for the RAM, and on the 8 Elite, it's up to 5.3 gigahertz or up to uh, 10.7 gigabits. So, there you have it for that chipset. The NPU's new Google Edge TPU uh, for the NPU, and then for the 8 Elite, it's new Hexagon AI engine on device, multimodal AI support, uh, ISP, new ISP shoots in uh, 4K videos at 60 frames per second. With the 8 Elite, it is AI Spectra ISP up to 320 megapixel photo capture, 8K HDR video recording at 60 frames per second. The modems between the two, obviously the G5 still using Samsung for its modem with the um, Exynos 5400 
and the 8 Elite using the Snapdragon X80. So there you have it there. So yeah, these are just a quick, um, you know, benchmark comparisons. Like I said, nothing's really set in stone until we have these devices in hand. But this just kind of gives us an idea of what we can expect when it comes to the Tensor G5, its performances, what it's going to be able to handle, what could we expect. It just kind of gives us an idea. But at the end of the day, we'll only know exactly how the Tensor G5 performs within real world usage plus doing our own benchmark scores based upon how we use our devices, what we have on our devices, what's installed, how our settings are, and then we can run benchmarks and see what we get. But again, as I always say, benchmarks do not tell the full tale. It is always user experience that is really going to tell you how this phone is going to perform.